Hi guys, following on from my tutorial the other day on how to convert your DAS scenes into Poser, Ellis Myers, uh, one of my kind viewers, offered a much easier way using Collada Export. And his method saves all the messing about exporting one file at a time and changing between export modes. And it exports the entire scene in one go. There are one or two limitations with his method, and I've actually refined it just a tiny little bit to make it even easier. But I will definitely be using his method in future, especially when you have scenes with lots and lots of components in. His method is much, much easier, and it still gives you the full editability that you got with my method. So before we can do this, we need to go to Poser. And here's my content library. And what you need to do, this is the refinement, is you need to add a library. So what this is going to do is it's going to add another runtime. And when you click on that, if you go to wherever your uh, DAS Studio uh, library is, you click on DAS Studio, my DAS 3D library, and then you go to runtime in Explorer or what, whatever file browser you use, and then copy that file path across. So in my case, I've created a separate library so that when I uninstall and reinstall um, DAS Studio, there's no danger it's actually going to destroy or harm my content as well. So then I'm going to go into here, click this, and as you can see, it's already added this library here. You're just going to put the path in here, and there's going to be the path for the library there. So I'll just paste that in there. I'm not going to do it in this case because I've already added it. OK, so that's really, really important because what it does, you might recall the other day that I did a thing on um, searching for textures. And what that will do is it will ensure that when it searches for textures, it will search in the library that you just added as well as your normal default poser libraries. And that's going to take an awful lot of the effort out of this. Then all we just do is you go back to DAS Studio where the scene is that you want to export. You do export. And then you create a folder where you want your exports to be. So in my case, I've added a poser conversions folder now. And you give it a file name. So you can see I've already exported this one because it takes a minute or two and you don't need to be watching while I do that. And you just create a file name. So I, I chose a file name Greek Houses. It's going to tell me it's already found it. And it, that brings us to here. And then you just simply do show individual settings. Now, when Ellis did it, he left collect maps on. What, what that does is it creates a subfolder within your exports folder with all of the maps in here. And then you have to point it to those maps. But far easier, just turn that off and then do accept. And it will create, a, it will collate this whole scene and create a file. And if I now show you the conversions file, what you end up with is a single Collada format file here, in this case called Greek Houses. Now, this is less editable than my method because you don't get the individual OB, OBJs. But the actual file that you get in Poser is perfectly editable. One more thing, by the way, uh, when you do the export, there's an option to export cameras and lights. Switch that on. I find it doesn't work most of the time, but sometimes it does. So it's it's worth doing just in case. So now I'll go back to Poser and I just simply go import Collada. And then I import that scene here and you can import lights and cameras. So you can see here I've got four lights already the default poser lights and you'll see in this particular case that it doesn't add any to them this is one of the scenes where the lights don't work but the cameras do and it takes a while to set up the scene and there's my scene it's still thinking in the background for a second you can see here it's got the cameras at least hasn't changed the lights okay that's ready to go i think and you'll see here, if I come to lights, there's just standard one, two, three, and four defaults. So it hasn't added a light to the scene. But the cameras are really nice. So if I go to uh, uh, camera view, you can see it's imported 10 cameras. There's camera one. And um, let's just get rid of the uh, ground in the background. So I right click to select and I can choose whatever's underneath the cursor. And then I just go up to properties and do visible to turn it off. And here's the camera for there. I'd put a sky scene in the background there, a sky dome or something like that. And I'm just going to give that a quick render. 
So I'm going to change the render dimensions to fit, uh, match the preview window. And I'm just going to give that a quick render. <coughs> Now, um, you may recall if you watched my my manual conversion that one of the problems with OB, so you can see that's kind of adequate, the lights are not appropriate, we'd have to reconstruct those. Um, I'll talk about that one day, but not, not, not this day. So what I'm going to do, you may recall that when I talked uh, previously about doing a conversion, that I said that the OBJ format doesn't carry the full texture information that is present in a DAS, DAS Studio surface. And that's true of Collada as well. So we, again, we're going to have to reconstruct these textures. So here we have what's known as a stucco wall. And the stucco refers to this kind of um, textured, plastered kind of finish. It's very common in the Mediterranean um, as a kind of a cheap way of making the walls look nice. So if we go into the material room and then move the cursor over the scene wherever I left click it will pick up the texture of the object underneath so we've got white lime stucco material here and you'll see the only thing that's been plugged in here is the uh, the stucco diffuse color so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that texture here then browse and pick up this file path to all of the other textures sometimes that's necessary sometimes it's not and what we're going to do we're going to do a new node oh incidentally while i'm in that section so this is stucco to white i can see what textures have been included in the original file to make the uh, the stucco too so if i scroll down here if i scroll down you can see stucco stucco to white so is there any other components to stucco 2 uh stucco 2 white here uh okay stucco 2 spec so that's definitely going to be specularity and nrm you can tell just from the color these kind of purple and blue and yellow colors that's a normal map and that's confirmed by the suffix nrm so this this creator has used a nice useful convention for naming so we know we've got two other files that can be brought into this to add more realism to this to this surface and uh, so i'll just show you uh beforehand so we'll just do a quick render of this scene or unless i already did no okay we'll just do a quick render from this uh, from this perspective so you can see what you've got obviously without the full lighting this is not going to be the uh, perfect render so we move in here and this stucco looks OK, to be honest. Um, but what we're going to just do now is we're just going to add those other two maps. So click on there and we're going to do new node two, uh, uh, two D textures image map. And we're going to do that twice because we know that we have two more image maps to bring in. Then we're going to click here. We're going to click image source. Browse and we're going to paste in that path that we copied from before. And so we're going to do stucco 2, any parts to go with stucco 2, so normal map here, and OK. And then we're going to drag that normal map from here, and we can either put it into a gradient bump and change that to normal, or we can just do it into bump map here. We could even try and use that as a displacement map uh, instead, but for now we'll just use it as a bump map. And again, we have this issue of not knowing quite how far we need to bump it, but we'll just leave it on... On there for uh, for now and now we're going to bring in another map this time we're going to bring in the specular map so where are we stucco stucco to spec and you can see that's just adding specularity to the peaks I think we're going to drag that across to the specular value we're going to change specular color we're going to double click that we're going to change the color to white now I am not a fan of changing specular to any color other than white because the lighting of the scene should create the specular reflection color, not your uh, not your specular color here. But some people like to change the specular color. The trouble is, if you do a different specular color, suppose I made that red because I wanted to make it warm, then it's like I said the other day that your perception of color is changed by the lighting in the scene so supposing we've got a uh, uh, say um 
a very blue light here to create uh, an afternoon or, you know, the blue hour or something. But now it's fighting against this red specularity and you can get some weird things going on here. You'll, no <coughs> you'll notice, sorry, that I also set the specular value to one. That may be too high, especially if you're using Superfly to render. But for now, we'll just work with default values. And now we're just going to render that again with those two plugged in. I wouldn't be surprised if the bump map is way too high, the value of the bump map. And render. And um, for me, a sign that a bump map is, uh, is a little bit too high is when the shadows look too deep. So here, I think that probably is bumping a little bit too high, but it's down to personal taste, to be honest. So we're going to render that again from close just to see what we think of those shadows. To be honest, there are some shadows already baked into the texture. So, uh, you know, it, it's down to you how much you want that bumped. Um, and as you can see, that just gives that a sense of depth. Um, I might perhaps go in there and change that bump map to 0.4. Uh, the bump map is also relative to the scale of the texture so you know 0.8 the default might be perfect for a texture that's really large or it might be way too much for a texture at a very small scale so i've just halved the level of that of that bump map and we're just going to render again So I tend to think that less is more. You know, when you see people do a bump map and on the skin texture and every pore is popping out of the out of the skin, I think that's way too much. Even down here, see this this highlight and this shadow? I, I think that's more than I would want. But then we can take control of that a little bit with the spec specularity. So overall, the bump map doesn't look too bad. So if I now go into that same material again, pick that up this is one of the annoying things of poser every time i go in it resets the the um selected surface so here and this time i'm going to go into specularity and i'm going to turn that down now if you know spec um slacko tends not to have a high gloss whereas the specularity of one is quite a high gloss so even though we've got a specularity map, which dictates what bits actually become specular, this value here dictates how specular they'll be. So I'm going to turn that down to, let's say, two, and I'm going to make that more of a plaster finish. And that may take out some of that deep shadowing. It's more likely to take out the high gloss on those peaks. So there you are. That's a little bit flatter now. So if we compare that, to the previous render. See, there's a bit of shine. It's this comparison slider is awful now. But you can see this is really shiny. This is more like somebody who's gloss painted some Artex in their house and it looks horrible. Um, and if you want, you can compare that even to the previous image here. You click this and you dictate which image you want to compare to. So this is the current render. This is the previous render. And we'll go back one more even from there. And we can compare. There you go. So um, I'm going to leave it there, guys, except to say once you've created that scene. Oh, incidentally, we can just have a quick look at the cameras. So camera view here. We're going to go to cameras two. There you go. Um, you could just save that as a scene and start importing your um, your poser figures now into that scene. Incidentally, you can also export DAS figures, but they won't be editable. They'll have all of their surface property that, but they'll have their shape and their poses. But then, if you try and move them, they go berserk. Um, you could perhaps re-rig re them, but it's far more trouble than it's worth, I think. But um, if you now take that scene, and again, you can go to scenes. Go to uh, your library and you can just save here using the add add scene. And now anytime you want that scene, including lighting, you just go to scenes and you can double click that. So it's saved in your library. And if you do want to save individual components of that scene, you can go to props. So supposing you wanted to use the pots in other, in other scenes, just go to props and then you can save the individual components there. Hope that helps you guys. I will speak to you again soon.